All right, we are officially live here on this Wednesday afternoon, and uh, we are going to be talking today about something that, uh, well, I've been asked a lot uh, since just launching brands in general, but right now it's more uh, about the whole Etsy thing that we've been that we've been dabbling in. I say dabbling in. My my wife started it about two years ago, but actively started to actually really get into it, I would say probably July of this year, um, which the results for this, this fourth quarter are just amazing. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the three-step process that we have used to find not one, but two profitable Etsy niches. And I'm calling them Etsy niches. They're basically niches in, in general. It's, it's how we are finding and what we're using to really allow us to feel confident moving forward. So if I was to start a brand new Etsy shop, it would be following this three-step process. So that's what we're going to be covering here on this, uh, on this live stream. If you guys have any questions, you can always drop them in the comments. Let us know if you can hear us and see us in the comments as well. We always want to see that just to make sure that we are in fact broadcasting. Um, and, uh, we are going to dig in here and we're going to talk about each step and I'll give you some examples and really just kind of walk you through it. Uh, Chris, is everything good on your end? Everything coming through okay? It looks like we're rocking and rolling. we got a bunch of people still rolling in. I see our, our little number of people hanging out with us jumping up as we're talking. So I'm ready to jump in if you are uh, just for everybody that's watching. I know you guys are on Facebook, YouTube, a couple different places. Just let us know, confirm for us before we kind of jump into the topic uh, that you can see and or hear us. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the world if you can't see us, but it is kind of the end of the world if you can't hear us because then you don't have a way of getting all of the valuable information that we're about to job to drop. And Scott, I know you just said uh, Etsy niches, and it, it really is niches, right? But the way that we're looking at this is, can we get started on Etsy? inside of this niche and then branch out into all of the other stuff that we should be doing right in 2022, almost 2023 as responsible business owners. And I I say responsible in quotes, right? Because we're never going to do everything that we should do. But if we set ourselves up with the right foundation by choosing a niche that we know we're going to be able to make money with, it makes all of the other stuff down the road a little bit easier, right? And they say, uh, Scott, there's a, a very famous phrase that I know, uh, your son is familiar with. It is more money, more problems. And I, I have to disagree with that, right? I think it's more money, different problems. And the, the problems that you have when you're able to make money in a niche are much higher quality and much more fun to deal with than if you are starting in a niche where there's no money, because it's not no money, no problems. It's no money, same amount of problems or mo money, different problems, right? And so if we can get the foundation set, if we can start ourselves off right by choosing a niche that we know will be profitable, Once we get started with that, then we can deal with problems as they come. We can start to do some of the things to be a little bit more competitive and it sets that foundation and makes everything else a heck of a lot easier. Yeah. I I guess the thing that, you know, like I said, the reason why I wanted to do this is because number one, people are always interested, right? Like when you tell them, oh, you know, my wife's shop just did, uh, I pulled the numbers before, but over $40,000 in the last 74 days, right? When we got into Q4, it's like, okay, well, you know, how did you find your niche? And then, you know, my business partner, uh, Debbie, you know, she's, uh, she's gonna, well, actually she's over 200,000 for the year. So it's like, how did you find those niches? Like, what is the secret sauce? So I know that that's what people want to know. I don't want to break it down for you, but to be honest with you, this is what we've been doing for years. It's no different. Although, People want to know like, okay, but how did you find these two niches? Uh, And that's really what we're going to be breaking down. So uh, that's what we're going to do here. Now that we are officially uh, rocking and rolling. uh, Also, do me another favor real quick. If you are here live or even on the replay, let me know right now if you feel as though you have narrowed in on a niche on Etsy. Let me know in the comments if you have or if you're still searching. Um, and if you are still searching, uh, what is one of the sticking points? Like, what is the thing that you're stuck on that's not allowing you to really get started with that with that niche? All right, so let's uh, let's kick this thing off. Today, what I'm going to be sharing with you guys is the three step process that we use. I say we; it's myself and my wife and 
my business partner, who's also a close friend of ours, and how we were able to find these profitable Etsy niches. And that that's why I'm putting the air quotes. If you guys are listening in on this, you can't see the air quotes. But because this here is, we're going to focus on the Etsy side of things. And there's actually one thing that I'm going to be sharing with you, one little bonus thing that's kind of added in here that if I can, if I can make this happen, or if it checks out, then it's, it's a no brainer Then it's going to reduce your amount of risk, but also, uh, just make it a lot easier for you to decide that this is a good niche to go into. And it was actually the case, uh, for, for my wife's shop, 100%. All right. But that's what we're going to be covering here. And I'm going to be breaking that down. And this way here, you can see that there really isn't any secret sauce. Like a lot of people think like, oh, there's got to be this secret formula. There's got to be these certain metrics that have to be met. And that is not the case uh, at all. All right. So just to kind of show you guys, and you guys know I'm not a big screenshot guy. I got to show you the numbers or anything like that. But this is this is interesting because this here is my wife's shop. And year to date right now is $60,859.23. But I put an arrow there because that is when we actually actively, and that was in August, when we actively started to really take this serious. Because my wife was doing this. If you guys don't know the story, my wife was doing this. Actually, was introduced by my business partner, um, this Etsy thing, and just was dabbling in it. And I think her first year, my wife did like $20,000. Um, so once... I started to see like it was starting to pay off a little bit. I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and let's get into this thing a little bit more. And that's what we did. And you can see there 74 days did 44,000 so far. We're not through December yet. And then uh, the other niche, uh, again, my partner, Debbie's shop, she's year to date 207,000. Okay. So the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because these are niches that anyone can get into. Now, not just these niches, but when you find a niche, you just have to validate it, right? Because I get a lot of people, they're like, well, I've got a good idea for a niche. I've got a good idea, uh, but do you, right? It might be a great idea, but is it validated? Did the market raise its hand uh, and, and let you know that, yes, this is worth pursuing? And I see that, um, uh, that mistake a lot. The other thing I see a mistake happening is, is people don't really understand what a niche is. They don't understand, they can't really define that. Chris, do you want to explain that a little bit more? Like where, where you see people like being, I guess, confused as far as like what a niche is and kind of, kind of go, go there before we get into the three-step process. Yeah. And I was actually, <laughs> I almost brought this up because I hadn't seen the slide deck and I was like, I wonder if people know what a niche is. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions, right. And we can go by like the dictionary definition, but the, the definition that I like to use is that a niche is something that people can identify as or uh, enjoy doing, right? So I am a fisherman. I am a lawyer. I am a, we have somebody uh, in the chat with us that's woodcrafter, right? I am a woodworker. I am a woodcrafter. I am this. I play volleyball. I play baseball, right? I am a volleyball player. I am a baseball player versus I am a water bottle, right? No one identify. well, I can't say that, but very few, if any people identify as a water bottle, right? Um, and so that would be an example of a product versus a niche. The biggest problem, Scott, that, that we see, and again, there's nothing inherently wrong with having a product focus. It just makes the rest of this process a lot more difficult. And one of the things we see all the time is people having a product focus, meaning they want to create a water bottle store. Mm -hmm. And while it is possible to make a profitable store that way, it's a lot more difficult than creating a store for people who identify as fishermen, fisherwomen, barbecue enthusiasts, whatever, because we are limited to just this. And if we can focus on a store surrounding a niche, right, creating all of the products for people who identify as fishermen, as barbecue enthusiasts, as woodworkers, it makes our job a lot easier. It makes selling people stuff easier, which at the end of the day is probably what we want to do if, if this is what we're talking about. And so to me, the, the easiest definition of a niche is understanding that it is something that people can identify as um, versus a product. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, 100%. Like the mistake I see a lot of people making is they think that, um, and, I, and I saw this the other day, like I'm going to get into the Christmas niche, right? And Okay, could you say that it's its own niche? Kind of, just because it's like, it's its own thing. 
but I don't necessarily, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that its own, its own like uh, niche. I, it's, it's an event. It's a time of year. It's like, are people into it? They are. Could it be? Sure. You could classify that as a niche is here's another one is a gift personalization store, a niche. No. People would say, well, yeah, I'm th that's what I do. It is, but you're going to basically be serving personalized gifts to specific niches. At least that's how I see it, right? Uh, a t-shirt company. Are you going to, is that a niche or are you going to serve multiple niches with your t-shirt company, right? Does that make sense, Chris? Like you see where I'm yeah. going with that? And it's, it's not to say, right? The, the way that I like to think about this is, is like walking through the mall, Right. Yes. And yes, you might see there, there, there is like a personalization store, but right. the vast majority of stores in the mall, even like clothing stores, right? You, you don't go into an old Navy because they are a t-shirt store. It's because they have men's clothing or women's clothing, right? That's kind of who they serve the market they serve yeah. versus being just a t-shirt store. And yes, your mall probably has like a place that just sells random t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Uh, but chances are you have, uh, like a Best Buy. And some of those guys where it's targeted just to electronics or it's targeted just to the people who go into Bass Pro or something like that. There's going to be a lot more of those stores. And the reason for that is you can buy multiple products. If you walk into a generic T-shirt store or you walk into the, the Bubba water bottle store, right? Chances are you're not going to walk out of there with seven different water bottles unless you're buying, you know, water bottles for the family right? You're going to find the one water bottle you like, and you're going to leave versus walking into some place like Bass Pro Shop, where if you're going into Bass Pro, you might be going in for camping gear, right? And chances are, you're going to walk out of there with five, six, eight things to make sure that you have everything that you need for that next camping trip or the next hunting trip or the next fishing trip, right? And if we focus on the niche, it's a lot easier for us to sell multiple things to the same person versus trying to sell them seven different water bottles. Yeah, no, it, it, perfect. And, you know, could we make the argument that, you know, okay, going into like being a gift giving, uh, you know, business, uh, can that be successful? It can, but you're going to be in multiple niches. And basically what I wanted to share here today was like what we do and the way that we think through it, it doesn't make it where it's a hundred percent, the only way, but it's the way that we've done it. And that's what I wanted to break down here for you guys, uh, because I think it's really, really important. So with that being said, let's move on. So step one in this process is this right here. And I, I made a note here to, to kind of talk through like the touch list niche, uh, in discovery kind of, you know, exercise that we do now, we didn't sit down and write down all of the things that we were interested in, in order to find these Etsy niches. That's not what we did. But when people get stuck, that's the first thing that I tell them to do, because it's easy for you to then start understanding how you would consider looking for certain niches versus just using a tool and just trying to find what's selling right now and finding the best product. Like that's not what we're doing. So what we did Okay. And I, and I put, and if you guys have never heard me talk about the touch list, I'll explain it really, really quickly. If you're stuck on like finding your niche, um, whether it's Etsy, Amazon, your own e-commerce doesn't matter. If you're struggling, like, where should I start my business? Like in, in what niche? Um, the first thing I would do is start looking at your own stuff. Right. And that's why we call it a touch list. So I've had people do this for years now. People have launched seven figure businesses with this exercise, by the way. And basically all you're, all you're doing is you're taking inventory on what you are touching on a daily basis, which then would lead you to what you're interested in or what you are, what you're doing right in your own life. Right. So an example of this would be like, you know, my daughter's into beach volleyball. So I go there almost every day. Right. So I'm like, oh, beach volleyball your child might not be into beach volleyball. So see, that's unique to me. Now I would take that and I would start to explore and go through the next steps if it was something that I put here as well, something that I'm interested in. And I think it's really important that we, we don't gloss over this part because the reason why my wife's shop is successful and will continue to be successful is because she has an interest in the niche, okay? The reason why Debbie is very successful, going to do over $200,000 this year uh, in Etsy, just Etsy. She's got more on her on her uh, Shopify store. 
uh, is because she has an interest in that. And that's how we discovered these. We, we actually, uh, Debbie and I, uh, we had started a brand uh, about four or five years ago. Now we've recently sold it. And, uh, that was all from the same idea, something that we were interested in that we said, Hey, I wonder if we could build a brand around this because we're interested in it. We did. And it was successful, right? So it always kind of comes from that. Yes. You can go out there and just try to find what is selling. What is a good niche? Like you can do that. Not saying it won't work, but you're going to be so much more successful at anything if you stay interested in it because you genuinely have an interest in it and you know the market better. You know what the customer might want or need. Um, and you're just going to be able to do a better job, in my opinion, right? And that's why I say that's worked best for us is really using this right here. Is like, and, and again, this is how those two niches, the ones that I'm talking about for the Etsy shops were discovered just like this. It's interests that my wife had and that Debbie had. And then they just went and started to see if it was actually going to work before they actually put in the work to do it. And I'll go through that in step two and three here in a minute. Chris, anything else you want to touch on there? I think, I think the touch list and it sounds cheesy, right? It sounds like over overwhelming over, uh, not overwhelming, like overrated, right? Yeah. It's like, it's a really obvious thing. And, and to the point that you made, Scott, we've had several people use this strategy, uh, and launch seven and, uh, one or more eight figure brands out of that. Right. Yeah. And it sounds too easy to work, but just looking at what's on my desk, right? There are five potential niches. Um, yes, this is my childhood bedroom. So I, I would think there are some things that I'm interested in in here, right? But just looking at, at what's around here, there's five or six things that could make a solid business if I'm still interested in them, right? Uh, 20 years on from when I lived in this room. And we have somebody inside uh, the chat right now that I guarantee you found their niche off of their touch list. They're in, in the drum niche. Right. And so people can identify as a drummer, right? It's something people are interested in or can identify as. Um, and chances are they probably picked up some drumsticks one day and said, Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, this is something that I'm into. And what you'll find is a lot of times you'll over, uh, you'll just look over things that are potential niches or things that you're really interested in because you don't think it's unique to you. And that I think is the the biggest thing that's underrated with using the touch list methodology is that because you touch it every day or you deal with it so often, you don't think that it's something that's worth pursuing because it's not, uh, it's not unique. It's not different. Right. And chances are your touch list, your wife's touch list, your husband's touch list, your kid's touch list. Yes. You are going to have some things on there like a mug, a pen, a pad of paper, but you, you're going to have 10, 15, 20 unique things for you that you, are things that you're interested in because you're touching them on a daily basis. And then you can use that rather than struggling for ideas, you have 15 or 20 ideas built in with things that you can can go after. And somebody in the chat just said, I have six mini schnauzers. Could mini schnauzers be a niche? Absolutely, right? Um, and so these are the things we don't think about, but when we force ourselves to write them down into the touch list, it makes things a lot easier for us to, to see and start to understand. And it's a great way of finding ideas because it's just things that you're doing in your everyday life that you're not going to think about because they're routine to you, but they might not be routine to everybody else. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's good. That's real good. And I love it that the, the drum niche came up and, um, and they say, uh, you know, I have a high dollar product, which are handmade snare drums and I have drum related pod shirts, mugs, etc. cetera. Um, that's awesome. Like that's really, really cool. Um, because yeah, that's exactly what you do. And it's, it's so funny. Like you're, you're going and, and building out a product line around that niche now, not just your snare drums, which is, which is really, really good. So that that's, that's the advice I would give, um, for anybody that had like a, a physical product that you might be hand making. Why not go outside of that and start offering some pod products too? Um, so I, I really like that. Um, all right, cool. So, um, that's the first step, right. Is, is really finding the niche. Um, but that's how we did it. Right. Like, so there, there's going to probably be in the next five years of my life, there's probably going to be another thing that comes up that I'm interested in that I might build a brand around. Can't say that I, I know what that is right now, but there probably will be something that comes in my life that will probably, uh, 
get me to start considering that. Um, not that I want to build another brand, but because it's something that I'd be interested in and I would see an opportunity. So that's step one. Step two is going to be validation. This is all about validation. This is where I see people making one of the biggest mistakes. And that is not realizing that people might not be into that niche, right? And then you might be saying, well, then what do I do? Well, I'd rather know before I put all that work in that people just aren't interested in it. Or is there some shoulder niches that I could potentially get into if I collectively put all them together. So a good one here would be like, let's say that bass fishing was the one. And I'm like, I really want to get into bass fishing. I love bass fishing. It's what I love to do. It's I, I'm pretty good at it. And I just would love to kind of build a community around it, but I'd also like to sell products in that niche. But maybe you find out that there's not a lot of products, not enough to build a business off of. Right. And so then you're like, well, what else could I add? Maybe you, maybe you add uh, hunting stuff, maybe just sports and outdoor stuff. So now it's maybe more of the outdoorsman stuff, right? Not just bass fishing. So then you can add all these other shoulder niches under the one to collectively add that up, but they're still in line with each other, right? So that's one way of doing that. But what we want to do here, and I am using the tool here, just I sh showed a little screenshot here of Everbe, um, which by the way, is a great tool and we do endorse it just because we're fans of it. And uh, it, it works really well for you to be able to do the validation. Um, if you want to check it out for free, go to brandcreators.com forward slash ever be, and uh, you can try it out for free. No credit card required. Um, you, there's my little shameless plug. So this is what we do. So now what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll check it out and I'll go, okay, is there demand in the niche? Not just the product. I'm looking at products, but I'm looking at the demand. So even though I might not find a shop that's doing the demand that I want. I'm trying to find collectively, can I find multiple products that could, that could total a good amount of demand, right? And then that's what we're doing. And then what we do is, and this is exactly what we did, is we started very similar to what I just said in like a bass fishing niche, but then we started to go outside of that just a little bit. And maybe when we went into deep sea fishing. Right? We added another little shoulder to it to add a little bit more uh, reach within that niche, okay? Um, but this is a really, really important part. This is where I see so many people dropping the ball because they get excited about the niche. They're like, yes, I know this is going to be great. I mean, I'm into it, right? Maybe, but maybe on Etsy, they're not searching for it. Maybe Etsy's not the right place for this niche. That could be too right? Um, guys, actually, I've got one thing I'm going to share with you here at the end that if you have this element, that's like another checkpoint now for me or another check, uh, another check mark on my checklist is basically this one element. If you have that to me, it will work. Um, uh, as long as there's demand, it will work, uh, on Etsy because it's, it's what it's built for. Um, but I'll, I'll share that with you here in a, in a second. So Step two is all about the validation process. And this is going to take a little bit of time, right? Anytime that my wife has come to me with an idea, which we've had idea, we've been in, in business together for over 20 years. We've been married for 28 years. Um, and you know, we've had, we've started a lot of businesses in our, in our lifetime together so far. Um, but anytime, and she'll tell you anytime that she comes to me with an idea, I'm like, okay, are people searching for it? And what platform are we going to be selling this on? And is that platform searching for it um, as much as maybe another platform, right? So we have to look at those things. Um, so product validation is huge. Um, Chris, anything you want to add there before we move on to step three? Yeah, Faith, Faith just said, this is exactly why I want to validate my niche inside of Etsy. Like I know my niche yep. exists, but I'm, I'm not sure if it exists inside of Etsy. And that's one of the reasons, Scott, at the very beginning of this, you said Etsy niche, right? We're not suggesting you build a business that's 100% dependent on Etsy, but we do want to verify that something like the Etsy marketplace already has support for the niche. And Scott, before we move on to the next thing, uh, can you explain the concept of a shoulder niche, just to clarify for people uh, what exactly that means and how we're using that terminology? Yeah, sure. So... What I'm looking at, like I said, a, a perfect example of this would be in the 
the uh you know bass fishing like if we use that right so that's like we we might have enough demand to just build that thing out all on its own if i went to etsy and started doing my my uh, product research and i found a whole bunch of, of products that were selling that were in that and they were selling monthly and, and, it, and it had a good amount of, of volume well then i might say okay i'm going to be good right there I can probably start and build out a business. And again, everyone's goals are different. If you want to get to $1,000 per month, you probably don't need to have a massive amount of demand. If you want to build something to a six-figure uh, brand, you're going to need some more demand, right? So you have to kind of figure out for your own self. And by doing the numbers, you can kind of see what can I expect, right? So we're looking at bass fishing. But then let's say that I said, okay, I also, because I'm into bass fishing, I'm also into hunting. So now I might take that bass fishing, build it, build it out with a product line and you know a whole bunch of products around that to serve that market, serve that niche. And then I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go into hunting. So then there might be also to even go a little bit further, even add more sub niches to that. I might go into certain types of hunting or certain types of fishing, right? And so that's what we're doing. We're building out, we call it a sub niche or a shoulder niche. It's one that's related, but not 100% the same, right? We know that if someone's into bass fishing, a lot of times, and I, I don't know the exact numbers, but if you're into bass fishing, you're into sports and outdoors. So you're probably into something else that's outdoors. That's a sporting thing, right? And that could be hunting. It could be something else. Does that make sense, Chris? Yeah. So just, just to clarify, right? Um, let's say, let's say we're in the dog niche. Um, cause we had somebody earlier bring up mini schnauzers, Scott. So mini schnauzers would be kind of the sub niche that we're in. The big niche would be dogs, right? Um, but mini schnauzers themselves may not have enough demand. So what we're going to do is we're going to niche up or niche down or niche left and right, right? So we could go from mini schnauzers and niche up to schnauzers, or we could say, what are other mini dogs that are related to schnauzers, right? So like maybe people who uh, are into mini schnauzers are also into mini dachshunds. So then we could add mini dachshunds into the store. And that would be an example of a shoulder niche, right? Niching up then would be niching up to schnauzers, right? And niching down would be going from schnauzers to mini schnauzers to toy schnauzers to pocket schnauzers or whatever, right? And so it's just, it's a, it's a niche that's just next to the niche that we're in that there's a lot of overlap with. And I think if we if we look at the big picture, right, like hunting and fishing or hunting and outdoors is often something that we would see together. Uh, you, you see like sports and outdoors a lot of times as a category. That to me would be an example of a shoulder niche, right? People who are into outdoor stuff will have a lot of crossover with people who are into general sports things, right? And so that would be kind of the, the shoulder versus niching up and niching down. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. So let's move on. So step three is, and this is a big one. This is a big one. Customer product line. Can I create a customer product line? Are there multiple types of product we can sell to the same customer now and in the future? Let me explain the now and in the future. If someone comes into my Etsy shop, one customer, can I get that one customer to buy more than just that one item? That right there is a game changer for a lot of people. One thing that a lot of people don't realize as well is it's a lot easier to get a customer to buy something else than it is to find a new customer, right? And what we want to do is we want to increase our cart value. So imagine you sell something for $25 but you have other products in there, maybe one's $39 and not, another one is $79 and another one is $22, right? I'm just using random numbers because all your products could be different prices. Let's say that they add two of those. And now you went from a $25 order to 70, 80, $100 order, right? From that same customer. So that's why it's really important that we're able to potentially turn that customer into a larger cart value. Okay. That's huge. Now, the second thing in the future, 
And this and, and on Etsy, it's really, really important because there's notifications that happen and stuff when someone favorites your shop. Or now that we can integrate with a service like Aweber and we can put we can extract the email addresses from a customer, we can sell them things in the future. Right. So that to me is a huge piece. And that is, you know, like the uh, as far as the checkpoint go or the check mark goes, we want to make sure that we're able to do that. Because if you're telling me that I have to sell, I'm selling one product to one customer and I just have to keep finding new customers, I, I don't like that business plan. I'm probably not going to build that out because the amount of effort that I'm going to put into this to just try to keep finding new customers, it's really, really hard. So what I want to be able to do is build a customer list over time, right? So if you have a thousand customers of people we know that are into bass fishing and I have products more than one that they could buy. Isn't it going to be a lot easier to have them buy something now or maybe eight months from now, right? Because I have more products. And the cool thing is, and this is, this is really, really important on Etsy is again, when someone becomes a customer or someone, they, they do something in your store, they, they favorite an item or they favorite your shop. When that happens, a lot of people are just like, oh, that's cool. Someone, they're interested in it. That's great. But now they're also notified when you have updates. If you run a sale in your shop, guess what? They're notified. If you get inventory back in stock after you ran out, they'll get notified. If uh, someone uh, went ahead and abandoned cart, they didn't buy. They wanted to, but they didn't buy. They'll get notified, right? So there's all of these different triggers that happen when someone in your shop takes an action like that. But what we want to do is we want to own that customer and we want to be able to sell more to them in the future. We also want to get something what we call like brand loyalty. So people are like, oh my gosh, like I came into this shop and I felt like I was in the right place. Like I was look like it's all about the thing that I'm interested in. Right. And I always use like the the uh bass pro shop when when people go in there, the, the fisherman or the hunter, they go in there, they're like, yes. This is where I, this is, this is it. This is where I get all my stuff, right? That's what you want them to walk away feeling. And by doing that, when you have that customer product line, you're constantly just thinking of like new products for that one customer. That's all your job is, is to just think about how do I innovate? How do I create new products? How do I, how do I get this in front of them? And the cool thing about that is, and we've done this and I've actually just, we, we just did a, uh, an email list building uh, giveaway that we normally will do to build up our list. And we had, uh, the winner, we had the winner, uh, you know, we sent out the winner and, uh, we looked up the winner. We, we said, you know, like, I, I wonder if they've ever bought anything from us. Well, they joined one of our giveaways a year and a half ago and they just bought this year. So over like almost a year before they purchased something, right? So when you have a customer, we know that they purchased, that's even more powerful. So that way, when we have those customers coming from Etsy, we're able to then sell them more stuff because we know that they're more targeted. So I'm going on a little bit of a, of a tangent there with like emails and customer lists and all that stuff, but that's why it's so important to be able to sell to them now, but in the future too. That's a big one. Anything you want to say on that one, Chris? Yeah, I think th this one to me, uh, and like all of these are important, but this to me is kind of the make or break moment, right? Yes, we, we, we need to validate demand, right? Like that, that's important. But this to me is kind of that check step, Scott, of do we have a niche or do we have a product? Because, and, and somebody in the chat who's been around our buddy Ruben said the garlic press, right? So if we have a garlic press store, could we sell that product to the same person? Well, maybe. Right. But chances are, if they bought garlic press A from us, they're not going to buy garlic press B. So what else do we offer? Well, that would be an example of a product focused store. If we want right. to look at something that is a niche focused store, right, it would be like the home chef market. Right. Right. So we would have a garlic press. We would have some custom made knives. We would have some cutting boards. We would have some of these things, which lets Apron, somebody yeah. who's into that come into the store and say, OK, I want this. I want that. I want this. I'm you know, I'm equipping my kitchen. Do what what do I need to be? the the best home chef right mm -hmm. 
we're going to offer them everything. I like to, you know, I, I started out, Scott, selling home theater, selling and installing home theater. And so I think of this as a home theater store. Like, can you walk in and get the speakers and the cables and everything else? Yes. Right. Like if, if you walked into Best Buy and Best Buy is not a home theater store. Right. But they sell these things and they only sold you the speaker, but they didn't sell you the you know, the, the cables to connect it and they didn't sell you the TV and they didn't sell you everything else. You'd walk out of there feeling a little weird, right? Cause then you'd have to go to another place to get the rest of the stuff and you go, okay, yeah, I got a really nice set of speakers from Best Buy, but I couldn't get the cables to hook them up. And I had to go to a different store to do that. It feels a little weird, right? And so if we are trying to serve a market, we need to be able to sell multiple products to the same person because we want them to walk out of our store with everything that they need or everything that they want. And right. if we're able to do that, then in the future, if we can get in front of them through an Etsy notification or through an email and we go, hey, we have this new thing that you might be interested in, then we don't have to chase customers. And you said something a couple minutes ago, Scott, that I think a lot of people gloss over. And it, it came from an article it's probably 15 years old at this point called a thousand true fans, yep. right? And the concept was basically, if you could find a thousand people that buy everything that you put out, you'd be set for life, right? Yep. And the the same thing applies here. If if we had 500 or a thousand customers and that those were the only customers that we could ever get out of Etsy, which is not the case by the way. Uh, but if that was the case, could we continue to sell them stuff? And if all we have is a garlic press, the answer is yeah, like once every five years when they need a new garlic press, right? If the answer is we sell cutting boards and we sell all of the stuff that you need to be a home chef, it makes that that concept a lot easier. We don't have to go chasing the customers. We have to go chasing the things the customers want. And it makes our job a heck of a lot easier as a store owner, as a product creator, and as somebody who's trying to make a living selling things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that that's a big one. And like I said, like going through these steps is like, that's that right. There's a big one. So let me, let me keep going here. So a lot of times people want to know like, well, how are you finding ideas of like products or products in general, what's selling in that market? So a very easy thing to do is to just put in your keyword, like the, the main keyword. So hunting, I just typed in hunting and I let auto suggest on Etsy. And all of these are the top things that are searched for right now, right? So right now we're recording this or doing this live, uh, let's see here in December of 2022. So obviously it's Christmas time, right? So you have hunting, hunt, hunting gifts for men, hunting SVG, hunting gifts, ornament gifts for men, Christmas shirt sign gifts for men, deer, tumbler, so on. Right. Uh, another one, bass fishing, bass fishing, SVG. That's just a digital file, which we skipped by that. Um, bass fishing hat, gifts, ornament, tumbler, lures, uh, tumbler wrap, sublimation. Uh, then we've got newborn, newborn gift, newborn gift girl, coming home outfit, uh, boy, ornament, hat, girl, outfit. So those are just quick ways to see what, what other things are people looking for? What are people buying? Because if people are looking for it, there's a chance they're going to buy it, right? We're on a, we're on Etsy, which Etsy is a is a platform to buy things. So it's a buyer's search engine. All right. And this is just like a quick, like, let's just test real, real quick and see what's happening, what's coming up. Um, so that's something that anybody can do. And usually that that's what we do when we get started is we're like, we gotta, we gotta just see what's selling here. You know, does it even make sense? Then we're going to run some numbers through, uh, ever be and, and kind of see what's going on there. All right. So that little extra thing I wanted to share with you, the element that to me, if your, if your niche has this, this capability, it's going to work really, really well. Okay. At least in our experience, it's worked really well. And I've been realizing that when you have something that is giftable on Etsy, it has a chance to do very well. And the reason why is because when people are looking for a unique gift for that person, right? It could be a gardener. It could be a fisherman. It could be uh, someone who likes to cook at home. Maybe it's the, the guy that's into barbecuing, like whatever, right? They're going to go there and look for a gift, right? And anywhere that you go on Etsy, there's always something there for like idea, gift ideas for men, gift ideas for women, gift ideas for fill in the blanks, right? And so whenever we can have that uh, part of our, our niche, 
it's going to make it even better because that's what people are also doing. So we can sell it to the actual person or we can sell it to the person giving the gift to the person. Does that make sense, Chris? It does. And I think this, you know, this is not going to be a make or break thing, but I think Scott, this is also kind of a nice side effect of going with the niche based approach to begin with. Yeah. Because if you are targeting something that someone identifies as or can be interested in, right? At Christmas time, their family is going to go to Etsy and go gifts for hunters, right? <laughs> gifts for fishermen. They're gifts not going to type drummer. in coolest water bottle gifts, right? right? There, there's going to be a handful of those weird people because you're really into water bottles or whatever. But chances are they're going to type in the, the interest, right? So they're going to say best gifts for hunters, best gifts for fishermen, best gifts for home chefs, yep. best gifts for whatever. And if we're able to give something that is giftable, right, which anything that I can think of that would fall into a niche that someone would buy for themselves is also giftable, right? You're able to address this element just by choosing the the niche correctly to begin with and, and using the niche focused versus the product focused approach. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, it's not a make or break, but if you have this element to it, it definitely will help because I am finding that Etsy is a, a gift giving site. It's like where, where you go there to look for a unique gift or something like, like we had someone in the comments talk about their, their niche, like drumming, right? You know, something like, I love drumming, right? Like that, that, that if it could be put on a t-shirt, right? It's like, that's probably something that could be given as a gift for someone that's like, oh, that person's just you know, they're, they're crazy about, you know, gardening. They're crazy about drumming. They're crazy about bowling. They're crazy about whatever, fill in the blanks. Um, that potentially could, uh, could be something that helps you sell more of that product or your products, um, for that niche. All right. And then here's another thing to get ideas is just go to Etsy and uh, just type in the search bar gift for Hunter, and then let it fill it in like gift for Hunter and fisherman gift for hunter dad, gift for hunter husband, gift for hunter man, gift for hunter boyfriend. You see, um, gift for newborn, gift for newborn baby girl, baby boy, twins, parents, right? So those are just some ideas when you type in gift for put in your niche and see what comes up. Um, so that's something there that you can do as well. And that's something that we have done for sure. Um, so recap real quick on the three-step process is one, touch list, an interest, an interest is something I think is really, really important because when you're making designs, when you're doing print on demand, you're going to be making designs and you're going to be putting them on products. You want to have an interest in it, or at least I do, because it's going to help you creatively. Um, and it's going to keep you interested. Step two, product validation. This is where you're going to see the niche demand. Um, and that's just through the product validation. It doesn't mean you're picking products at that time. And then three, that's where you are going to be uh, building out a customer product line. But we're going to be also validating that we can create a customer product line for now and in the future. Um, so those are some big ones. Basically, what we're talking about here is building a brand. Okay. And yes, we're talking about Etsy, but this goes further than that. Right. You can take this once you get this kind of up and running and you can build it on your own website. You can have a Shopify store if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but this allows you to build an email list, right? Like we talked about and to sell people more stuff in the future of what they're interested in. Right. But we're choosing one niche and we're focusing on creating multiple products to sell people that are interested in that niche. Bottom line, like that's what we're doing. Very, very simple. All right. And that's what we have done. And that's what I will continue to do, right? Whether it's, you know, selling on Etsy or selling outside, it doesn't matter. I'm always thinking about, can I create products to serve a niche? Because I know that it's so much easier to sell that person that's interested in that niche more products in the future than it is to go find new customers. Not saying I'm not going to find new customers. I am, but you can really, really build a nice, solid consistent brand by following this model. And that's exactly what we have done. Um, so guys, this is where I'm going to remind you that if you've gotten value from this, do me a favor and smash the like button. That would be amazing. Let other people know about it. It helps us also subscribe to the channel. If you want more content like this, we're up, we're getting updates and 
just kind of walking you through what we're doing on a regular basis. There's a playlist right now that's put together. Um, I titled it Etsy selling tips. There's a bunch of videos there that kind of goes through some of our, some of our case studies that we've done, some of our, our strategies that we've shared. Um, so you can go check that out. Um, just go ahead and subscribe if you're interested and, uh, you'll get notified when we publish new videos on YouTube. The other thing I wanted to remind you about is something that we're doing on January 4th. So depending on when you're listening to this, uh, we are going to be teaching a class, uh, and it starts on January 4th. And we've been asked to teach this since, you know, we've been doing pretty well on Etsy now. And Debbie's been doing really well for a couple of years now. We've been asked to share what that process looks like. So what we're going to do, we call it, we're calling it the seven day cha-ching challenge. And what this basically is, is us sharing with you exactly what we have done and what we would do again if we were to start over. And basically we're talking about building out the shop properly, how to optimize it, how to fully take advantage of all of the tools inside of Etsy, everything that we've done. We're giving templates out. Um, so this way here, you can kind of fill in the blanks, things like that. So really just optimization on that. Then from there, we're going into uh, exactly what our strategy is for getting sales, right? And that comes down to traffic, of course, right? Different different ways that we can do that internally and externally. Um, and at the end of the seven days, that is when we're kicking on our seven day cha-ching challenge. And that will be in seven days, hopefully you'll get a sale or two or three or several. Um, but a lot of people have not heard the cha-ching sound on their phone yet. And uh, we want to help them achieve that. And so that's what we decided to do. If you're interested in joining us, you can go to brandcreators.com forward slash sales, and uh, you can check that out and you can grab a ticket. And uh, right now uh, we are getting ready for the January 4th class, which is going to be awesome. Um, so guys, if you have any quick questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them here for you today. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions in the queue that you wanted to address here? Yeah, we have one and it wasn't really a question. It was more of a statement, but I know it's something that are, that's on people's minds. And I think it was Deb, uh, had said, you know, I I'm worried about niching down because I don't want to knock people out. Right. Like I want to appeal to as many people as possible. And Scott, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because to me, uh, when we're niching down, we are excluding people, but excluding people isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that really fast, because if it were me, I, I'm OK with excluding people because it makes us more appealing to the people who are into our stuff. And somebody had said, you know, can I uh, can I have multiple niches in the same store? And that that to me is kind of the the same problem, right? If we're selling drum and stuff and mini, uh, what was it? Mini schnauzer stuff. Like the crossover between those two niches is not, doesn't make any sense, right? And so, yes, we're including people who like drum stuff and people who like mini schnauzer stuff, but it also creates a weird sensation for the people who are really into mini schnauzers or really into drums. So what are your thoughts on niching down uh, versus staying generic just to not exclude anybody? Yeah. So having multiple niches under one brand, we wouldn't personally want to do that. Um, now I'm not saying you can't, right. There are people that have done it. Um, again, take a t-shirt company, for example, you know, they're going into multiple niches, but they're also doing mass, right. They're going to go out there and do mass, but they're not, they're not going after the, I want to have one customer and have that customer buy again and again and again. That's not their model. Their model is just like, I'm going to be the one that has a thousand, you know, different types of niches and t-shirts and all that stuff. Um, but I would say exactly what you said, Chris, as far as like being specialized in a niche makes you more like, okay, that's where I need to get it because they specialize in this thing. Now, with that being said, you also can build out your store in those sub 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 niches, right? Or those shoulder niches, as we said, most niches are going to allow you to have other niches that kind of overlap each other. You know what I mean? Like, so like, uh, like we had talked about before, like, let's say it was in the cooking niche. Like, let's say that you were into the cooking niche and you're like, okay, I want to do everything about baking, right? Well, that's all baking stuff, 
but could you do stuff that wasn't just baking and now it's like, okay, can we do something that is going to be, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, some type of, uh, meal, uh, prepping or something you could, right. It doesn't a hundred percent align with baking, but it's still food and your cooking and things like that. So, you know, or I'll give you another example, baking. Let's say that you did cakes and your whole thing was cakes. Could you do cupcakes? Sure. Could you do pies? Sure. You know, so you could do all of those other things. Um, but the way I like to look at it is I'm going to start and be really, really kind of known for this one thing, but I'm not going to name myself cupcake shop, right? I'm going to allow myself to be able to branch out to other sub niches if I want to. Make sense, Chris? Yeah, and I think the the general store approach versus the the niche specific store approach. I want to kind of address that a, a little bit, right? Like if you're really into something, uh, let's say let's just go back to the fishing example, right? Does Walmart, which is a general store, right? Do they sell fishing stuff? Yeah, they sell like baby's first fishing rod. They sell some some generic fishing stuff that if you're not really into fishing, but you you're going to go fishing, you're going to be able to get that at Walmart. But if you're really into fishing, you're not going to be able to get the new lore or like the the newest kind of fishing line or a lot of those kinds of things at Walmart. You have to go to a specialty fishing store or like a sports and outdoors store. And so we're not excluding people because we're still going to sell the, you know, the baby's first fishing rod or whatever. Right. right. Um, do they make babies first? Like the, the little kids ones, right. That have like Spider-Man on it. I guess it wouldn't be babies first, but you get where I'm going with that. Yeah, I get. Where um, we're still going to sell that stuff. So anybody who'd be looking for that is still going to come to our store, but we're also going to sell the new lures and the new lines and all of those kinds of things for people who are really into fishing. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to worry about excluding people because we're not worried if we're a fishing store, we're not worried about getting the people who are looking for deer scent, right? Because that's right. not what we're into. We're not excluding them. We're including everybody who's into fishing. And by doing that, not only do we get, Scott, that crucial number three, can we sell multiple things to the same person, but we also can sell those things, believe this or not, guys, at a higher price than mm -hmm. we could if we were a general store. Why? Because we are able to develop brand loyalty with our customers. And so we can sell at a higher price to fewer people and actually make more money along the way because we're not trying to be everything to everybody. We are the expert in fishing stuff. We're not trying to be uh, the entire sports and outdoors Cabela's staff. We're trying to be the fishing dude, right? And it makes it a lot easier for us. We're gonna include everybody who's into fishing and the people who aren't into fishing, they would have never found us anyway. So we're not excluding anyone. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, okay, so... Uh, let's see here. We did have, uh, let's see here. Philip says I'm already signed up, ready to build my store the correct way. Awesome. Philip. Uh, let's see. I did. I saw one more question. We had, we had a question, Scott, about the, the Cha Ching challenge first. Uh, nothing over on YouTube. Great username, by the way, said, wait, the Cha Ching notification has a sound. Yes, it's yes, it does. ching, right? Yep. But if your phone is always in silent or, yep. uh, or in vibrate like mine is, you've probably never heard it. Right. right. Um, but if you turn, if you take your phone off of silent and you have the, like the notification sounds on, it will sound touching. It'll make the cash register noise every time it you does. make a sale, it which does. is a lot of fun until you're selling 300 things a day, in yep. which <laughs> you will probably get tired of that sound. You're, you're not tired of the result of that sound, but you'll get tired of hearing cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching all day. Yep. Right. Um, but Scott, somebody had asked, what if I can't attend, like I have a nine to five job, can I still attend the Chuching Challenge? And the answer is yes, right? This These are not going to be like all live classes. There is gonna be a, a little bit of a Q and A and some of those kinds of things. But the plan right now is basically as we're going through the, the seven days of the material that will be released uh, most likely like first thing in the morning, yeah. right? Like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern, something like that. And you're able to go through that material on your own time. Now, Scott, this correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this is not going to be like 15 hours a day of content, no. right? No. This is going to be broken down into actionable steps that you can implement, even if you are working a nine to five, which let's be honest, nobody has an actual nine to five job, right? It's more like seven 30 to seven, something right. like that. Right. But you're still going to be able to on your lunch break or before you go into work, you're going to be able to listen to that last day's video and implement these things. The whole point of this challenge is that it's broken down into bite sized chunks that you can implement in your business, regardless of how busy you are. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, let me just say on that real quick. So yeah, each day, 
is going to have like an action step or two attached to it. And basically that's it. And it's just imagine we're kind of starting from scratch and we're building out each component and optimizing, optimizing, optimizing and building up to where we get on the last day to where then we are kind of kicking off the seven day cha-ching challenge where we want seven days um, to run now that we've got everything optimized. So this way here, we can get a sale uh, coming in the door. So that's really the goal of it. So it's like us chunking it down of what we would do if we were sitting down with you to really fully optimize the store and uh, and make sure that everything is ready. And then we go ahead and we'll we'll kick on the traffic. Somebody said, so wait, is it is it live or isn't it live? So it's it's not live, right? But there is live components to it. So everybody's gonna be going through it together, right? We're all gonna be going through that that material together and implementing together. There's also gonna be some QA, some some review, some of those kinds of things. So there is a live component to it, right? Yes. Uh, but the the action steps, those items, those are gonna go live, right? Go live, meaning be available. Uh each day so that you can go through it on your own time because we do know, right? First of all, like Scott, you and I right now are both on the East coast, even just within the U S there's people in three different time, four different time zones. How many times, three different time zones. Uh, no, there's Eastern central mountain and Pacific, right? So four different time zones just within the continental U S and then you got people in Hawaii and Alaska, right. That are in their own time zones. Then you have all the international people. And so there is going to be like a live Q and a component to this, but the training itself is going to be pre-recorded so that if you're in Hawaii, you can still go through it and you don't have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to be able to, to attend the exactly. live session. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I know Debbie's looking forward to it. Debbie would have been with us today, but she is sick and, uh, you can probably hear from me. I'm, I'm a little under the weather myself, but, uh, you know, I felt good enough to get on here. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it, Chris. I think that's all the questions. Uh, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. This has been awesome. Uh, once again, if you're interested in going through the seven day cha-ching challenge, this is going to be the first time that we're bringing people through this. We're going to be rolling this thing out. We're calling it our pilot uh, program to where we're going to take this class through it the first time. And the idea is to, uh, to be able to get that cha-ching sound on your phone and uh and from there get you the momentum that uh, will carry you and really build up for 2023 um and that's really what i'm excited about so if you're interested in joining us brandcreators.com forward slash sales but guys that is going to wrap it up i want to thank you guys if you're tuning in on youtube facebook wherever you're tuning in from i want to thank you guys and uh, do me a favor once again smash the like button if you got value from this if you are interested in subscribing to the channel you'll get notified when we have updated videos which we are coming out with them on tuesdays and fridays right now on youtube so that's it guys that's going to wrap it up as always take care take action have an awesome amazing day and i'll see you right back here on the next episode take care guys